Imagine sailing into the unknown. No GPS, no compass, just you, a wooden canoe, and 10,000 miles of empty ocean stretching to the horizon. Most people would call this suicide. The Polynesians called it Tuesday. These weren't just any sailors. They were the greatest navigators in human history, settling islands so remote that European explorers wouldn't find them for another thousand years. Easter Island, Hawaii, New Zealand, places so isolated that reaching them seems impossible even today. But here's what's truly mind-blowing. When scientists finally cracked the genetic code of modern Polynesians, they discovered something that shouldn't exist. Their DNA wasn't just one story, it was two completely different stories from two different worlds, somehow fused together in ways that defied everything we thought we knew about human migration. Tonight, we're going to solve the greatest mystery in human genetics. Why is Polynesian DNA a cocktail of two ancient worlds? The answer will take us on a journey through time, across oceans, and into the deepest secrets of human evolution itself. But first, we need to understand just how impossible their achievement really was. The Pacific Ocean covers one-third of our planet. It's larger than all the land masses combined. To put this in perspective, if you could walk on water, it would take you three years of non-stop walking to cross it. Yet, somehow, using nothing but stars, wave patterns, and the flight of birds, Polynesian navigators found specks of land smaller than Manhattan in this liquid universe. They didn't just find them once they found them consistently, creating trade routes across thousands of miles of open ocean. The numbers are staggering. In just 2,000 years, they settled over 1,000 islands across 10 million square miles. That's an area four times the size of the United States. And they did it in wooden canoes. But when researchers started studying modern Polynesian DNA in the 1990s, they stumbled onto something that made their maritime achievements look simple, by comparison. The genetic evidence told a story that seemed impossible. Instead of finding one clear ancestral line, scientists discovered that every Polynesian carries the genetic signatures of two completely different ancient peoples. People who lived in different worlds spoke different languages and should never have met. How did this happen? When did it happen? And why does it matter for understanding not just Polynesian history, but human evolution itself? To answer these questions, we need to follow two ancient trails that somehow converged in the deep past. The first trail starts in the most unexpected place, Taiwan. Today, it's known for semiconductors and night markets. But 5,000 years ago, this island was about to launch the greatest migration in human history. The people living there weren't sailors. They were farmers, Neolithic agriculturalists who had just learned to grow rice and raise pigs. They lived in small villages, made simple pottery, and had no reason to look beyond their island home. But here's where the story gets interesting. These farmers spoke the original Austronesian language, the mother tongue that would eventually spawn over 1,200 languages across the Pacific. They didn't know it yet, but they were about to become the ancestors of everyone from Madagascar to Easter Island. Something happened around 3000 BCE that changed everything. Maybe it was population pressure. Maybe it was climate change. Maybe it was just human curiosity. But these farmers did something unprecedented. They became sailors. They island hopped through the Philippines, then Indonesia, then Malaysia. With each generation, they got better at reading the ocean. They learned to navigate by stars, to read wave patterns, to follow bird migrations. They transformed from farmers into the greatest seafaring civilization the world has ever known. And they left behind a breadcrumb trail that archaeologists call the Lapita culture. Their distinctive pottery covered in intricate stamped patterns appears across thousands of miles of ocean, marking their path like ancient GPS coordinates. By 1500 BCE, these descendants of Taiwanese farmers had spread across the Western Pacific. They had mastered oceanic navigation. They were ready to conquer the most remote islands on Earth. But they didn't sail directly into the empty Pacific. First, they encountered something that would change their destiny forever. New Guinea, the world's second largest island, wrapped in impenetrable jungle and towering mountains. 
For 50,000 years, it had been home to the Papuan people descendants of some of humanity's earliest ocean crossers. These weren't recent arrivals. When the Lapita sailors appeared around 3,500 years ago, the Papuans had already been living there for longer than modern humans had existed anywhere else outside Africa. They had developed their own languages, their own cultures, their own ways of life. Their DNA told a story of incredible antiquity. While the Lapita carried the genetic signatures of relatively recent East Asian populations, the Papuans carried lineages that stretched back to the very dawn of human expansion out of Africa. But here's where our story takes its most crucial turn. When the Lapita reached New Guinea and the nearby Solomon Islands, something unprecedented happened. These master navigators people, who had spent 2,000 years constantly moving suddenly, stopped. They settled in the Bismarck Archipelago, a chain of islands between New Guinea and the Solomon Islands, and they stayed there for hundreds of years. Archaeologists call this the Great Pause. Why did the greatest navigators in human history suddenly stop navigating? The answer lies in what happened during those centuries of pause. Because this wasn't just a rest stop, it was a nursery where two worlds would merge in ways that would reshape human genetics forever. And the way they merged reveals a secret that scientists have only recently uncovered a secret written in the DNA of every Polynesian alive today. In 2016, a team of geneticists published a study that sent shockwaves through the scientific community. They had analyzed the DNA of over 1,000 Polynesians and what they found challenged everything we thought we knew about human migration. They looked at two types of DNA, Y chromosomes, which pass from father to son, and mitochondrial DNA, which passes from mother to child. What they discovered was extraordinary. The Y chromosome DNA was overwhelmingly East Asianthi signature of the Lapita men who had sailed from Taiwan. But the mitochondrial DNA told a completely different story. It was heavily Papuante signature of local women who had been living in near Oceania for 50,000 years. This wasn't random mixing. This was systematic asymmetrical integration. Lapita men were marrying Papuan women in significant numbers, creating a new population that carried the genetic legacy of both worlds. Think about what this means. Every Polynesian carries the DNA of two incredible legacies. The seafaring genius of the Lapita men who conquered the Pacific and the deep ancient wisdom of the Papuan women who had survived 50,000 years in one of the world's most challenging environments. During the Great Pause, these two populations didn't just coexist, they created something entirely new, a culture that combined the navigational brilliance of the Lapita with the environmental knowledge of the Papuans, a people who would be perfectly equipped to settle the most remote islands on Earth. But the genetic story gets even more extraordinary because those Papuan women carried within their DNA something that would add a third ghostly presence to the Polynesian genome. In 2010, scientists discovered something that rewrote human evolution. In a cave in Siberia, they found the finger bone of a previously unknown human species, the Denisovans. These weren't quite Neanderthals, and they weren't quite modern humans. They were something else entirely. And here's the shocking part. They're not completely extinct. Their DNA lives on in the genomes of people across Asia and the Pacific. But nobody carries more Denisovan DNA than the Papuans. Up to 6% of their genome comes from these ancient people the highest concentration anywhere on Earth. And when the Lapita men married Papuan women during the Great Pause, they inherited this ancient legacy. This means that modern Polynesian DNA is actually a three-way fusion. East Asian, Austronesian, Papuan Melanesian, and ancient Denisovan. They carry within their cells the genetic memories of three different human worlds. And this inheritance wasn't just symbolic. Scientists believe the Denisovan genes provided crucial advantages for life in the Pacific, enhanced oxygen metabolism for deep diving, improved adaptation to high altitudes, resistance to certain diseases. The very genes that helped their ancestors survive epic ocean voyages genes forged in the depths of human evolution, were now guiding double-hulled canoes across the Pacific. But this ancient genetic gift comes with a price that Polynesians are paying today. Today, Polynesian populations face some of the highest rates of diabetes and heart disease in the world. 
In some Pacific islands, over 40% of adults have diabetes. The statistics are heartbreaking, but scientists believe they understand why. It's called the thrifty genotype hypothesis. The same genes that helped Polynesian ancestors survive month-long ocean voyages with limited food supplies now work against them in a world of abundant processed foods. For thousands of years, Polynesian bodies were adapted to feast or famine cycles. They could efficiently store energy during times of plenty and survive on minimal calories during long voyages. These were survival superpowers. But in the modern world, with constant access to high-calorie foods and sedentary lifestyles, these same genetic adaptations have become liabilities. The bodies that conquered the Pacific are now struggling with the biochemical challenges of modern life. This isn't just statistics, it's about real people dealing with the unintended consequences of their ancestors' incredible journey. The genetic gifts that made the settlement of Polynesia possible are now creating health challenges that entire communities are fighting to overcome. But understanding this connection is the first step toward solutions. Researchers are now developing targeted interventions based on Polynesian genetic heritage. Traditional diets are being revived. Cultural practices that promoted health are being restored. Because the story of Polynesian DNA isn't just about challenges. It's about the incredible resilience written into every cell of their bodies. The same genes that carry risks also carry the legacy of humanity's greatest navigation achievements. So, after this journey through time and genetics, what's the answer to our original question? Why is Polynesian DNA a mix of two worlds? The answer lies in a specific moment in human history, the Great Pause in Near Oceania, roughly 3,500 years ago. When the Lapita voyagers reached the Bismarck Archipelago, they encountered the Papuan peoples and made a choice that would reshape human genetics. Instead of conquering or avoiding these ancient populations, they integrated with them. Lapita men married Papuan women, creating a new people who carried the best of both worlds. This wasn't just cultural mixing, it was genetic fusion on an unprecedented scale. East Asian navigational genius, Papuan environmental wisdom, and ancient Denisovan adaptations all combined in one people. After centuries of integration, this new population exploded across the Pacific. They weren't just Lapita anymore, and they weren't just Papuan. They were something entirely new, a people perfectly adapted to conquer the most remote islands on Earth. The DNA of every modern Polynesian tells this story. It's a living testament to humanity's greatest odyssey, proof that our species' greatest achievements come not from isolation, but from the courage to encounter the unknown and embrace what we find there. This is more than just Polynesian history. It's the story of how human diversity becomes human strength. How the meeting of different worlds creates possibilities that neither could achieve alone. Every time a Polynesian child is born, they carry in their cells the genetic memory of this incredible journey. They are the living descendants of the greatest navigation achievement in human history and the living proof that our differences are not barriers to overcome but gifts to be shared. But this story is far from over. Right now, scientists are making new discoveries about Pacific migration, human genetics, and the incredible journey of our species. The DNA of Pacific Islanders is revealing secrets about human evolution that we never imagined. If you're fascinated by this intersection of genetics, archaeology, and human adventure, there are ways you can be part of this ongoing discovery. Companies like 23andMe and Ancestry DNA are actively recruiting people of Pacific Islander heritage to expand their databases. Every sample helps scientists understand more about this incredible genetic legacy. Universities across the Pacific are offering courses in Pacific genetics, archaeology, and navigation. The University of Hawaii, the Australian National University, and others are at the forefront of this research. If you're a student looking for a field that combines cutting-edge science with incredible human stories, this is it. And if you want to honor this legacy, support organizations working to preserve traditional Pacific navigation techniques. The Polynesian Voyaging Society, the Vaca Tamako Project, and others are keeping these ancient skills alive while using modern science to understand them better. Here's my challenge to you. 
Take a genetic test. Learn about your own ancestral journey. Because while the Polynesian story is extraordinary, every human genome tells a story of incredible journeys, unexpected encounters, and the courage to explore the unknown. If you want to explore more stories like this, where cutting-edge science meets incredible human adventures, subscribe and hit the notification bell. The Pacific Ocean is still out there, still vast, still mysterious. But now you know that it's not empty. It's full of the genetic echoes of humanity's greatest voyage. And that voyage is written in the DNA of every person whose ancestors had the courage to sail into the unknown. What incredible journey will your DNA reveal? Thanks for watching.